You can build an emulation machine like this for well under $100, and can it game? Hell yeah, it can. And so today we're checking out the AMD RX 550 graphics card. In previous videos, I've tried these other graphics cards and somebody recommended me this RX and I found them on eBay. I found this one for $30. So I thought it kind of fit the bill of building one of these small form factor, you know, Dell Optiplex, these computers that you could find online for around 20 bucks or so. And you can outrig it up and uh, have just this emulation, home media, you know, really cool little gaming machine either for you or your kids. So let's go ahead and see how this graphics card holds up, see if it's a good contender. So this is interesting. You'll see it's there's a little bit of lag, not much, but I'm upscaling quite a bit to 1080p. And uh, so it looks really good. But you'll notice once I, first of all, it's chaotic. This first, you got to watch it just for the chaos. But uh, the minute, you'll see in just a second, in a few seconds, the minute you get out of all this, the lag disappears, right? So it's only when there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen, but even then it was super playable. And then look at that, now we're red, white, white, and now we're good for the, and I, I raced the rest of the race and not a single issue uh, from then on. So I pretty much found the limit there. Um, if you play at the 720p, there's zero lag. It never goes into the red. So here's our bench unit, and here are all the different graphic cards. This is the slowest one, the Quadro K620, 2 gigabytes of RAM, the 745 OEM, another 2 gigabytes of RAM, and then we finally, somebody put me onto this, this is the AX550, 4 gigs of RAM, low profile, uh, looks like it's DisplayPort only, that shouldn't be a problem, and uh, we're going to give this one a shot. Supposedly it's about 40% faster than these, so let's see how that works out. So the person who sold it to me, they left the um, the high-profile case adapter, so I had to take it off. All right, there you have it, the AX5500. All right, we're rocking the Intel i5-2500K, the Radeon RX5500, 4 gigabytes, an SSD, and 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. First thing that we tested was Need for Speed Rivals. I wanted to play a PC game. That's where I thought this graphics card would excel the most, given that it's GDDR5, it's got more RAM, faster RAM, faster clock speeds. Like, on paper, this thing is, is cooking. Should be good. Now, um, I am using my OLED monitor here, and I, I always forget, like, this is a 4K monitor, so defaulted to 4K. So I'm actually playing this in 4K right now on medium. This is what they recommend my default so it plays great no lag whatsoever and you'll see shortly about the gpu utilization there's still plenty of room you might be able to get this so it's running really good she could go even higher quality than that super playable so as far as other systems super nintendo dreamcast sega saturn this card should blow all those out of the water you shouldn't have a single issue what I do want to do with this video is start with the good, and then it gets a little ugly towards the end here, so we'll get into that. But Dreamcast runs flawlessly, no issues. You can even upscale it as well. Moving over this into Nintendo Wii, uh, running fine, no lag issues. I didn't upscale or anything like that, but um, it ran it just fine. It wasn't any. You can see the cars and everything else moving just fine, no lag there. Now moving up to GameCube, this thing should play GameCube no problem whatsoever. And this might be an issue that I ran into, that I need to change, but I tried what they said. But as you see here, watch what happens, that the screen goes blank running on the Vulcan drivers. So I had to retry it on the OpenGL, and I also tried it on the DirectX 12, and I had lag. You know, I know on Vulcan it shouldn't lag whatsoever but on, uh, it, it lags. So, back to the, we're on the Nintendo Switch now, on Super Mario Worlds. So it's 60. And this lags not at all. So, but it's a totally different emulator than the GameCube emulator. But, uh, you can see it runs fine, but you'll see in a second, or not in a second later, that when we play Super Smash Bros, you do get lag. You know, a game is gonna have a lot more going on on the screen, something that, um, and so, this, the first thing, I did install the Adrenaline drivers, 
And that is something nice about this graphics card, that you that the drivers are readily available. You can still get them. I was able to get them for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. So the card was totally up to date. The computer's up to date. And I've tried different video front ends, and I've tried changing the resolutions, and I've tried using some of the hacks. And I haven't had any significant differences but maybe somebody could tell me otherwise I went on some forums looked at what people were saying and um, there might be something I'm just missing but from an emulation standpoint there's some issues didn't drop there is some all. issues with uh, getting this older AMD card working so here's the Super Smash Bros you can see see it's it's glitchy there's definitely lag and um, not playable yeah, I would not play this game under these circumstances. It was hard to, you know, throw hits. There was a delay in the controller because of the delay on the screen. And uh, not good. I then put it into handheld mode to see if that would help. You know, that's a lower resolution than when it's docked. And uh, that did not help much at all. That was not a, a, a plus. So I already did Burnout 3 earlier in the video with PlayStation 2. No issues there. I was even able to upscale. That's great. Moving on to PlayStation 3, Rayman Origins. Not a not a super difficult game to emulate. No issues whatsoever. Zero lag. Runs great. So some PlayStation 3 games you should have no issues. I did not play around with the settings much. You might be able to play around with the settings and get even better performance. But you'll see with Ridge Racer 7 and um, I forget the name of this other game, uh, both of them, this one right here, Dragon Crown, you're going to have a lot of, you're going to have lag. Like Dragon Crown you see on the left here, it's having issues. All those spikes you're seeing on that bottom graph are lag. So you can see it's little lag spikes are coming in and out. It should be a flat graph. And so not fun to play. And then Ridge Ranger 7 here, PlayStation 3. Again, you can see a, you can hear the music hiccuping, and it's definitely running out of slow This page sums up why I had such high hopes for this card. You can see it's a three-year newer card, so the APIs are going to be newer, the tech's going to be better it doesn't even have it on this screen but the ddr5 ram versus the ddr3 ram huge it should be huge milestones different and it is but only in pc gaming so in the as far as emulation goes i think the nvidia and just the their drivers and things like that just just run a lot better or how a lot of these emulators are set up i, I feel like that was a big part of it now you can always do some tweaking but um even scrolling down here and looking at CSGO frames per second versus League of Legends, can you believe that that the NVIDIA card actually gets higher FPS in League of Legends than the AMD card does? And then in CSGO, the increase in, in FPS, I mean, that's not nothing. That's pretty significant increase. So there you go, like a 26% better in, in... As far as what I paid, I paid $10 for the K620. I paid $17.50 for the GTX 745. Obviously you're gonna you're gonna pay more. The prices are higher now. And then the Radeon, I actually got it for 30. It was I sent them an offer for 30. It was $33 out the door. So you can grab cheap Dell Optiplex HPs, these small form factor computers for very cheap. And the processor in them is de decent and a lot of them have an extra PCI slot available. So you can throw a low profile graphics card. So there's a whole community that likes to see what's the best bang for your dollar low profile card. So somebody recommended that I try out the RX 550 because I found a good deal on one on eBay for $30 and I felt it, it went into the area where that's a pretty darn good deal. And if it performs nearly as what it looks like on paper, this could be the new best performer as far as low profile. Also, if you're watching this video and wanna know what's the best graphics card I can get, the 3050 low profile is gonna be your best bang for your buck. 
with all these graphic cards, make sure your power supply is big enough. But the the thirty fifty supposedly only requires a three hundred uh, watt, and there's been people who've gotten away with the two fifty. So that would be it. But look how much these go for. You're going to be spending a couple hundred bucks compared to thirty dollars, twenty dollars. And so I want to focus on just building a really cheap emulation machine, best performance to the dollar. So in conclusion, it's a nice card and it's only Save from 2017 compared to some of these other cards from like 2012, 2013. And uh, for PC gaming, it's quite impressive. Uh, all these cards do get really hot. That is something I haven't discussed in many of my videos yet. You might want to add extra ventilation or airflow because these small form factor computers have way less than a larger um, computer does. But, um, or larger case. But as you saw it yourself, PC gaming, this thing is a beast. Emulation gaming, it requires some tweaking. The 745 OEM so is a great alternative option for you. Uh, but that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.